Welcome. Week four in the college football season. We are going to be talking prize picks this week, uh, checking out what they have to offer. They have just dropped um, a whole mess of, of prize picks for us to dig into here. Um, a lot of this is going to be some uh, some gut reaction, some, some first thoughts uh, for me. Um, I haven't combed through everything, but um, you know, I'm, I'm here to help jump on these things quickly for you guys and um, just give my thoughts on, on where we're at this weekend. So we'll jump right in with the passing yards. Uh, Shador Sanders at 335 and a half. You know, where do we draw the line on Shador in this Colorado offense? I tend to think that this is a little bit lofty for them against Oregon. 335 and a half. The, the trouble with this line is that if there is anything that we can probably bank on, it's Colorado throwing and throwing and throwing and throwing. Oregon's pass defense isn't super stout. I mean, Tyler Shuck had his way um, when when uh, Tech played Oregon. Um, so I see where they're coming from with this line, but I am still taking the under on Shador. He is one of the guys who I'm playing pretty heavily this week uh, with that under. Um I just don't think that their offense is sustainable. Travis Hunter out. Um, I have to assume that Colorado is going to do a better job of, uh, or Oregon's going to do a better job than Colorado State did at, at handling Michael Harrison, um, the tight end uh, who really just ate over the middle and in the seam last week. Um, so I, I like the Shador under this week, under 30, 335 and a half yards. Um, Bo Nix. You know, he's tempting. Um, I think that the combo one is probably a little bit more tempting with his rushing and passing upside. Um, we've got some midweek options. If you're playing um, any of the Thursday or Friday action, uh, just keep an eye on those. Um, Brendan Armstrong going up against his his old team, some old teammates there with uh, playing U- UVA. Um, I tend to like this Cade Klubnik, uh, 227 and a half passing over. Um, they've just looked like a more complete team. I think they're going to have to pass against Florida State um, to be able to win it. So I'm not not shying away from uh, Clemson there. Uh, let's see. Big game with TCU and SMU. Chandler Morris uh, probably will like his combination prop a little bit better. 256 and a half is hard just because we know that he's going to get some on the ground as well. Um, let's see. Keaton Slovis, 196 and a half. I like the over uh, pretty well there. He's really um, seemed to be a little bit more competent of a quarterback this year uh, at BYU. We thought BYU was going to really try and pound the ball. Uh, Aiden Robbins, though, just not getting off the ground. Um literally and figuratively uh he's he's had a, a, a rough go so far so um i do like the slow this over on that one continuing to go down some big games drew aller he came out uh i believe it was 185 and a half uh which was has has been bet up here um i still like over on the 193 and a half uh iowa seemed to be exposed a little bit last week against i believe it was western michigan Um, Their defense just did not look as stout as a normal Iowa offense or an Iowa defense looks. Um, And I really think that Penn State has a good shot of of taking advantage of that. Um, Had a a rough go against Illinois. I do think that Iowa probably learned from that game that, you know, we are going to emphasize uh, shutting down Singleton and and Allen um, and make Drew Aller beat us over the air or through the air. Um, Harrison Wallace was out last week. I do believe he's coming back in this game. Um, so having a healthy Wallace to pair with uh, Lambert Smith is important for Aller. Um, wide receiver is the one spot that really there is not a ton of depth to be able to lean, uh, lean on or rely upon. Um, so I will say, you know, whiteout condition for uh, for for Penn State this week. It, they they bring their game uh, during the whiteout, and I think it's going to show uh, with an over there. Um, that's really all I'm loving on the passing yards here. Let's kind of switch gears a little bit, check out our passing touchdowns. 
Um, you know, when, whenever there's a mobile quarterback and I, I'm looking at their passing touchdown prop, I always tend to lean on just play fantasy points or play a total touchdown prop if you can find one. Um, Jackson Dart, I might lean a little bit away from actually um, from that mindset. And I do, he's a, mo- a mobile quarterback who, um, but one and a half, I feel like, I feel like there's a pretty good shot. He's getting two touchdowns through the air um, against Bama. Um, Hudson Card is another one that I like, uh, one and a half passing touchdowns. I actually would feel confident enough to add that to the card um, with the over on one and a half passing touchdowns against a Wisconsin defense that uh, was really exposed against Georgia Southern last week. They they did not step up like I thought they, they should have. Uh, let's hold off on those props and try and find another passing one, passing yard combo. Some interesting ones, uh, pairings. You know, they. I, I haven't seen this one, a uh, Jackson Dart and Shador Sanders pairing. Uh, usually they pair same games, as you can see uh, from, from these guys. Um, but that's an interesting Shador and Jackson Dart prop. I don't think I'm touching it, though. <laughs> um, yeah. Those passing combo ones are just they they bake in a little bit more of a uh, uh, a higher prop as opposed to going with the individual ones, um, just because they're thinking maybe you get bailed out by one guy and not the other. We've got some combo passing rushing yard props. Bo Nix at three forty one and a half. Um, that's a healthy line for him for sure. I'd probably steer away from it. Um, just because you're getting, I think, a little too high there, even against a bad uh, Colorado defense. Chandler Morris, 303 and a half. I like the over on that. I do think that he's going to run quite a bit on SME's uh, defense. Uh, Jackson Dart, 280 and a half. Jalen Daniels, 267 and a half. DJU, 228 and a half um, against Washington State. That'll be. Uh, out of all of the ones that I just mentioned, I think that DJU line I like a little bit more than the others. I don't think he's really getting uh, a ton of respect as as the dual threat uh, athlete that he is. Um, so maybe there's a little a little bit of an edge there. Passing interceptions, um, yeah, I don't love any of these. I mean. Wigman is going up against a tougher secondary. Auburn's secondary is decent to good. Um, I uh, I don't love uh, the idea of betting against him and with the way that the passing attack has really excelled this season. Drew Aller hasn't thrown an interception yet this year. Um, maybe it's against Iowa. Maybe Iowa gets it. Um, but he's done a really good job taking care of the ball. None of these really scream must plays to me, though. So we'll jump into the rushing yards. Bo Nix, 28 and a half. You know, that seems like an easy over. Um, you do wonder, you know, what's Colorado going to do to try and neutralize defense or neutralize other offenses while they're on defense? Um, do they try and get a little bit more pressure uh, on the quarterback? Um, can they get more pressure on the quarterback is <laughs> anybody's guess. Um, Marquise Irving, 80 and a half. I do like the over on that one. I think that they'll try and run the ball and give Oregon try and give their defense a little bit of a breather because they will likely be uh, running up and down the field a lot <laughs> this week. Um, got some Thursday and Friday lines here that are interesting. I like uh, if you're playing Thursday. I like Marcus Carroll to go over. Um, I like uh, Shez Malusi to go over as well. Uh, 56 and a half there on Friday for him. Let's see. Oh, it looks like somebody just got taken off the board. They uh, moved some guys around there. Um, Jordan Travis, Kate Klubnik, uh, 32 and a half. Um, nobody really jumping out. Amari Daniels, 60 and a half. You know, that's the timeshare that they've got going on there. I kind of like the under. Um, nothing super must play about it though. Blake Corum, 83 and a half. I like the over on that one uh, against Rutgers. I think Michigan's going to roll uh, without much hesitation, to be honest. 
Um, got Corey Kiner at 53 and a half. Um, I like it, but with Emory Jones stealing some, uh, some yardage, it's a little bit dicier. Chandler Morris and Amani Bailey, 45 and a half and 86 and a half. I think they'll be able to run the ball. Um, I, you know, that Bailey 86 and a half is probably the one I like the most. I almost like it enough to add it to my card. I'm going to add it in here tentatively in case there's not another one that I love. Um, yeah, I, I like the Amani Bailey 86 and a half. Um, more rushing. Damian Martinez at 92 and a half. He really seems to be the between the twenties guy. Uh, and then, you know, DJU and Fenwick are some guys who have kind of vultured some goal line carries and some red zone carries. Um, so I like, I like it. Washington state is not a pushover on defense by any means. Um, so I'm not, not playing it this week, but I don't, I don't mind the over. Estime and Henderson here, 74 and a half, uh, 68 and a half. If I'm playing Estime, I'm probably play, playing that under. Uh, I think Ohio State's going to come to play. Um, you know, probably both of these I'd play the under on. Um, yeah. Singleton and Allen, I talked about if I was going to win, it's going, uh, or if they're going to compete even, um, they need to really neutralize Singleton and Allen and make Aller throw. Um, I, I I don't want to play either of those uh, lines. I think that given the home field advantage for Penn State, I think that there's a decent chance that they break one. Again, I mentioned that Iowa's defense, uh, though they uh, looked vulnerable last week, perhaps it was a little bit of a look-ahead spot and they got caught napping. Um, perhaps it was a little bit of sleepwalking through uh, a MAC opponent. Um, but they're still a defense that you should tread a little lightly on. So... Um, I don't don't love any of those. Will Rogers is interesting there at negative uh, eight and a half yards. I'd probably go under uh, just because you're getting that sack yardage. Betting on one or two sacks from South Carolina to really uh, make that that line hit. Let's see some others here. We'll get into some. Well, these are more quarterbacks, and you've got Xavier Weaver there, but Chador, Wigman, Dylan Gabriel all coming in at two and a half total touchdowns. Um, I like that Dylan Gabriel over, to be honest. Two and a half uh, total touchdowns. I think they will do just fine against uh, Cincinnati uh, this week. Rushing and receiving, we've got uh, Malusi and Jason McClellan. I like the Malusi touchdown prop for Friday night. Uh, just something to keep in mind. Evan Stewart and Jason McClellan, less so. <laughs> don't, don't love those. Uh, we get into the rushing touchdown props. Devin Neal is an interesting one at half a touchdown. Damian Martinez, we talked about his red zone um, usage not being fully what we want. So I'd steer away from that as well. Um, Estime, Singleton, both seem like guys where if, if they're going to get into the red zone, um, there are decent chances of scoring, but you don't know what the scores are going to look like, and they face opponents that have really solid defenses this week. Some combo yardage props here. Um, don't love them. I mean, honestly, the Trey Benson, Will Shipley, 129 and a half. I almost like the under on that. I mean, 129 and a half is not much for these two guys. But with Benson being in a timeshare and Shipley having a really tough tough matchup this week against Florida State, I kind of like those um they're also guys who have receiving capability so um you're hoping that maybe some of the yardage and usage that they get comes to the pass game instead if you're going to be using any of those uh let's see marquise irving 101 and a half i am taking this over all day i think that he is going to really get involved in the passing game um against colorado uh, i think he can eat with that Donovan Edwards, 71 and a half. I would definitely take the under on Donovan Edwards there. Um, he just hasn't been utilized this year the way that we maybe thought he was going to. Um, not adding it to the card because I kind of, I, I like where I'm at here with the five I've got, but we'll take a look at receiving um, and see if there's any, it looks like six that I've got already here. Um, but we'll take a look at receiving here as well and see if there's anything that jumps out. I've uh, got, 
Uh, Tez Johnson at 47 and a half. I like that one quite a bit um, uh, as going over. Um, I talk a little bit this week in my uh, DraftKings video about which of these guys, Tez Johnson or Troy Franklin, is most likely to replicate the types of routes that really killed Colorado last week with crossers and over-the-middle throws. I think Tez Johnson is a little bit more of that guy. Um, Troy Franklin, uh, I, again, this is more anecdotal, but I feel like he's more of a, uh, a higher ADOT uh, receiver. So I think both of them have a, a great shot at going over. Tez, though, is the one that I would lean on. And honestly, between that one and the Amani Bailey over, I think I like Tez's more. Um, they're receiving uh, core is a little bit more spread out, so the volume isn't great for Tez. But I just think the matchup is, is hard to ignore. We'll pass over some of these Thursday, Friday lines. Braylon Allen at 15 and a half receiving yards is very interesting if you're playing Friday night. Um, Malik Washington and Malachi Fields on Friday night. If uh, you've been paying attention, when Calandria is the quarterback, he tends to favor Malik Washington more than Malachi Fields. Um, if we do get Tony Musket back in the uh, saddle for Virginia, um, he tends to favor Malachi Fields. So keep those points in mind if you're playing any of the Friday props. Johnny Wilson, Keon Coleman. Um, I kind of would gravitate here towards Keon Coleman at 69 and a half. I like, I like the uh, over on him. Um, I am of the mindset that he is the guy who will be elevated in big games. Um, and so I think that this fits the bill against Clemson that he could really shine. Donovan Edwards, 17 and a half receiving yards. I would take the under all day. I'd, uh, in fact, I'd take this over the uh, combo line that we saw a little earlier um, of, I believe it was 76 and a half. Uh, I would just take the under on the receiving yards and call it a day with him. Um, Jordan Watkins, 48 and a half. If Zachary Franklin and Trey Harris are both out, I love this prop. I love the over on Jordan Watkins uh, for sure. Um, got Egbuka and Marvin Harrison here. I, you know, it's hard to bet against those guys. They're just so talented. Um, Keandre Lambert Smith, Theo Johnson, got Tyler Warren. Interesting that we've got two tight ends there for uh, Penn State. Theo hasn't really been involved a whole lot. Um, but he does tend to get the higher ADOT from a tight end perspective, more so than Warren. Um, so, I mean, you can see that, you know, lower volume, but still a pretty close receiving prop because Warren gets the shorter dump offs out of the backfield type stuff as an H back. Um, just, you know, some, some thoughts there. Um, It'll be interesting to see if uh, Jalen McMillan is playing uh, against Cal for Washington. I believe he will, um, but Adunze there at 103 and a half. If McMillan doesn't go, I mean, that's a, a pretty nice smash of the over uh, for Adunze. Um, we've got Weaver. We mentioned that one already. Receiving touchdowns. Troy Franklin receiving touchdown is one that I like. Keon Coleman receiving touchdown is one that I like. Um, I just think those guys have to be involved if their team are their teams are going to live up to the uh, the high totals on that slate. Um, yeah, I think those are, are the only two I feel super comfortable with. These combo plays, Egbuka and Harrison's a really interesting one. Uh, one sixty three and a half. Um, I like that one, to be honest. Lambert Smith and Eric All at 75 and a half. Eric All is probably going to inherit all of those Lachey touches uh, from earlier in the year now that uh, Luke Lachey is out for the year. Um, I like the over there. I'm not actively playing it because I'm a little bit tentative about the offense in that game in general, but it's a it's a... I think there's an edge there to, to be seen. Let's jump into fantasy score here and, and close things out. And surprisingly, they just don't have any fantasy scores for Saturday yet. So I take that back. Um, 
be keep keep an eye on there um, and jump in the Discord if you have any questions about those fantasy score ones. Uh, those I, I tend to lean on uh, quite a bit. Um, it just seems like uh, a little bit more tolerable with variance to uh, to lean on those. Um, but uh, what can you do about it? <laughs> we are at the mercy of prize picks dropping these lines, guys. Uh, so uh, keep your eyes peeled on uh, anything that gets dropped here. You know Thursday, Friday, um, or uh, you know, Saturday morning, if there's anything new there. Um, but that's, that's kind of all we've got, um, uh, to recap where I'm at with, with my ticket here. I've got six plays. I've got Shador Sanders under 335 and a half. I've got Hudson card, uh, more than one and a half passing touchdowns. If you're playing that Friday slate, Blake Corum, uh, more than 83 and a half fresh yards. I've got Dylan Gabriel, more than two and a half total touchdowns. Marquise Irving, uh, Bucky Irving, more than 101 and a half rushing and receiving yards combined. And then Tez Johnson over or more than 47 and a half receiving yards. So uh, let me know what, what plays you guys like, what plays you guys are uh, are shying away from in the Discord. Um, enjoy football this week. We got Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all football filled. Um, so I hope you, uh, you're you earning your keep with these prize picks. And uh, I will talk to you next week. Have a great day, guys.